Okay, so welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be looking at um, standard instrument departures or uh, SIDs as they're known and we're going to be looking at how they're done and uh, we're going to do an example out of London Heathrow and uh, we'll have a quick talk through that, what we're going to do and how we're going to fly it. So let me get the charts up first. You just click this on. Here we go. So this is a star. That is not what we're doing. This is a SID. This is what we're doing. So, as I said, we're in Heathrow. We're all sitting on runway 27 left. Uh, the reason we're here is because I'm relatively familiar with it. And some of the stars, oh, sorry, stars, some of the SIDs uh, here are quite complex. Um, what I mean, uh, well, they're not just RNAV, some of them are conventional SIDs, so they use conventional navigation, so they use beacons, as you can see here. Um, but they're also, uh, some of them use multiple beacons. So, uh, as you can see, this one originally uses London, it uses Burnham NDB, it uses Children NDB, and it uses Brookman's Park uh, VOR. So there's quite a lot going on. And because we only have one ADF receiver on the aircraft, it makes things a little bit trickier. Um, so this is what we're going to be doing, we're on 27 left, so we're going to be doing, I think it's the Brickmas Park 7 Golf off 27 left, um, the 7 Foxtrot would be on the other runway, so 27 left, yeah, Brickmas Park 7 Golf, so you can see here straight away, uh, it's Brickmas Park 7 Golf, uh, this is your minimum climb gradient, so we're not going to worry about that today, but we're going to make it anyway, this is our departure frequency, so we would put that up, but we're going to turn our traffic control off because they're annoying, and, um, these are your minimum height restrictions, and this is the important one, your initial climb clearance uh, limit. So 6,000 feet is our initial climb limit. So we will uh, set 6,000 feet on our autopilot. There's 6,000 feet shown on our primary flight display as our pre-selected altitude there. While I'm doing that, I'm also gonna set the uh, barrow to the airfield elevation, which should be around about 80 or 90 feet. There we go, done. It would also be on the uh, hectopascals for Heathrow, but we'll not worry about that. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. Looking back at the picture, we're going to have a quick look at what we're going to do. So we're going to go outbound on runway heading, uh, which is more or less 270. And then we're going to turn uh, right and we're going to head up on this uh, 298 inbound to Burnham. So we're going to need Burnham for that. And then at 60 from London, so we're going to need London VOR up. We're going to make a right turn and it looks like quite a slow, lazy right turn and we are going to uh, go inbound towards Chiltern and we're going to intercept the 054 inbound to Chiltern we're going to make sure that we're at these height restrictions we'll discuss how we're going to do that in a minute and then we're going to intercept the 064 so not much of a turn between Chiltern and going towards Brickman's Park intercept the 064 uh, towards Brickman's Park so that is the story and uh, how are we going to do all this? Well. Initially, the runway heading is going to just be uh, on on the runway heading until we're at a suitable height that we can turn. So we'll say 500 feet. We'll turn and we'll intercept uh, the uh, zero, uh, 298 into Burnham. And then whenever we're on the 298 to Burnham, we're going to have to have London VOR up to check the DME uh, for these altitude or these uh, points. So we're only going to six miles, so we don't have too long on this leg. And then we're going to make the right turn and so this 4,000 feet, 5,000 feet and 6,000 feet are altitude restrictions. So this 4,000 feet is 4,000 feet or above, 5,000 feet or above, and then 6,000 feet or above. So in order to make sure that we are at the correct heights and we are high enough by then, which I'm sure we will be in this, we'll probably be at 6,000 feet quite early. But in order to make sure that we have made these restrictions, we'll have London VOR up and we will use the tail of the VOR needle uh, what I need mean by the tail, let's show you. So let's put on our, uh, let's get away our yoke out of the way. And let's put on 13.6113.60, transfer that to active, which it is. And what do I mean by tail? I mean, this is the head, this is the tail of the needle. So this tail. Uh, will be on we're going to be on the 305 radio so this tail will be around at 305 whenever we're at uh, this point so we need to be above 4,000 feet by there 
and then uh, the three two six radial. So the tail will be on the three two six. Uh, so three two six is there. This there. So the tail would be there whenever we're at this uh, five thousand feet point. Um, then we're going to go to children, and we're going to be at six thousand feet of children. So that's obviously easy to check that we're six thousand feet by there because the NDB needle will flip, and that's when we're at children. Uh, then we're going to set six Brixton Park, and we're just set at six thousand feet. So we'll probably not do that whole outbound leg. Uh, let's have a look at the text. See what the text says. Text says what we've discussed. So let's set it up nice. So two seven zero. So we're going to set uh, two seven zero in the heading. Well, actually, it's just runway heading, but. Um, this reckons it's 272, but we'll set 270. Uh, we're going to intercept the bearing 298 to Burnham, Burnham right? So uh, let's get that up. <coughs> ADF 0298. Transfer. That's active. And then let's put ADF on here. No ADF data and no NAV data now. Why has it done that? I've had some issues with this uh, ditch and radio frequencies, but which it seems they've done again. So 13.6 will transfer that back to active. And then I don't know why ADF has, it should be 421. I don't know where I got 298 for, oh, 298 was in my course. Idiot, sorry. So it should be 0421. Seems to be whenever I hit that transfer button. So 421, which is Burnham, is active. But we have nothing here yet. If we have any trouble with these radios in the air, we might need to just um, go active pause just to sort things out. The 421 is still there. And we have 13.6. So London VOR is now working. And the other thing that we would need is the children, but we can't put that up yet until we've passed Burnham because we've only one ADF. But we do have two VORs, uh, so we could set 17.5 on NAV2. So let's do that. 117.50, uh, transfer that to active on NAV2. So we've got 13.6 London, 17.5, which is Sprickman's Park. And then we have 421.1 apparently now. <laughs> 421 again on the ADF. So let's check that they're all still there. 13.6, 17.5, 421. ADF's not getting any data at the minute. We'll see what happens whenever we get nearer. Um, so we also, we just put Brickman's Park up onto NAV2. And what we can do, we've already got this set to London. And we've already got this uh, set to our ADF, which we, we need both of those. Uh, London we need for the DME distance, which we'll get off here, you can see there. And we need the ADF to intercept the course inbound to Burnham and the course inbound to Children. So uh, we also need to have our uh, VOR track set up for inbound to Brickman's Park. So, um, we're going to set that up and we've already got 17.5 and I can set uh, the active nav to VOR2 because that's all, what it's on. You can see nav to Brickman's Park 17.5 exactly what we wanted and we need to set the inbound course to 064. I think that's 064. Okay, so now we're ready to go. Um, and it, it's really just thinking ahead. So we've got to think ahead to what radios we're going to need when, uh, how we're going to um, set everything up, how we're going to use our radios, what altitudes we need to be at, by what points, what altitudes. Sometimes you'll have step climbs, so you can only climb up to maybe 3,000 feet until you pass a particular point, and then you can climb up further. Um, but today, I think we're all set. So let's think ahead what we're going to do. We're going to take off on runway heading 270. We're going to intercept this uh, 298 course to uh, Children, or sorry, Burnham. And then at 60 from London, which we'll get here, we can make the right turn and intercept that at 054 into Children. And we'll also need to switch over our 
uh, ADF then. So yeah, that's everything. Let's uh, let's go see if we can do it. So uh, we do all our checklists and stuff, which we're not going to worry about today. We take our parking brake off, which we will do because it's hard to take off without it. And uh, put down our takeoff flap. So once we get our bourne, we'll put in the autopilot and free up a little bit of capacity. Very good takeoff. Take our gear up. Accelerating nicely. Take our flaps up. Alright. Looks. Oh, I was going to say that looks pretty stabilized, but not really now. Right. So we'll put autopilot on. The auto amper heading select. I'm going to go flight level change. And I'm going to just ignore the air traffic controller for now, so let's go back and let's put that over so that we ignore them. So now we need, so we're on runaway heading, so now we need to track that ADF 421 to Chiltern, which is on 298, so let's do that. It already looks like it's pretty close, so I'm going to put a needle on top. So that looks pretty close actually, so let's put the heading on 298 and see what happens. Uh, so we're in down to that and we need to, we're going to pass this 3D point and we need to be established inbound by them, but I think we're already established so that looks pretty good. Climb it up quite nicely, Gonna increase the speed, let's go to, oh wrong button. Uh, 150, no, nope. 141, that'll have to do. Okay, so we're inbound, three miles, we're already established inbound, that's good. What we can also do, because we have the ability to do it, is put the uh, wind data on. So, zero wind, perfect. Um, I'm going to take that off because it's distracting, moving around like that. So we're in by the children, now we're passing four miles. So we know we've got two miles to our turning point now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing the heading around first. To, and it's quite a slow turn actually, so we'll maybe put on, uh, well we'll put on 054 and then we'll change the ADF over and we'll have a look at what it's doing. And you can see our altitude restrictions are going to be no issue today. speed up a bit more so we're coming up to six miles from London thousand of feet to go in our altitude we're gonna set zero five four oops wrong button oh it when that happens. What I did there was click the heading select in the middle so it centers it. Right, 054, let's quickly change over our ADF and we want to set it to 277. Transfer that to active. Right, now we've got this and we want to intercept. So we wanted to intercept the 054 inbound but as you can see it's a little bit off from that, so we need to push the head around to here. So we're just going to intercept that. Our level nine at six thousand feet will bring our throttle back, and you can see we turned about the right place there. Actually, as you can, there's Burnham, so you should see that we end up going overhead, children, but. 
So that's about uh, 0 0.45 at the minute and we've got to get to 0 0.54 so we're just going to keep pushing it the way we are. Right, I'm going to start turning on now. As we get closer to Chiltern it's going to get more and more sensitive. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to put that at 0 0.54 I think. There's no wind. So that should be pretty close. Gonna be very, very close. And you should see that we're we end up going overhead, children here somewhere. Right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to have uh, VOR2, which for some reason has disappeared. Uh, we should have checked those radials off London DME. Um, so we should have checked that we were at 326. Well, we're already at 335. So we're, we knew we were already above them, but they would have been used as our check, uh, cross check on that. For some reason, our radio has ditched our Brookman's Park 175. So we're going to reselect that. So there we go. And you can see the ADF needles just creeping to the left a little bit. So we're going to push it back again. And it's getting really sensitive. So we must be getting close. In fact, there it's just flipped. So now we're going to intercept the VOR. Or we're going to go on this 064 to Brickman's Park. So if we click nav, I think it might intercept this. Because we have this set to nav2, the active nav set to VOR2, should intercept this. And look at that. Intercepted, it should start turning back now to keep that course and it's going to fly that the whole way to Brickman's Park at 6,000 feet. And that's our that's our instrument departure done. So um, if you could see a trace on flight sim, I think that would have been pretty accurate. Uh, the one thing we didn't manage to check because we were a little bit overloaded, well, I was a bit overloaded, was the radials for the check heights. But we were already at 6,000 feet, so you didn't really need to worry about those. Uh, just an example. So yeah, I hope you find that useful. Um, as I said, SIDs are all about planning when you're going to change your radios to what radios you need to use. Um, if you find this a bit confusing and things uh, with all the VORs and NDBs, I have some uh, NDB and VOR tutorials on how to use them. And those should help you uh, get to the point where you're able to track VORs, track NDBs, and then you're ready to fly uh, your standard instrument departures and your... Uh, standard terminal arrival routes so your sits and stars in and out of the big international airports uh, so i hope that was useful if you have any questions put them in the comments i'll do my best to answer them and uh, hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed it and if you want to see more tutorials in the future um, we'll get more up um, as soon as we can if there's anything you'd like to see in future just let me know and i'll do my best to cover those topics thanks